I have, um, I was an early adopter, I think, in social media from a general officer perspective in that I started right away in 2012 upon my promotion with a Facebook page. And then uh, in a couple years later that I gained um, a, a, a Twitter presence. And I did it initially for two reasons. One on my Facebook presence was that um, of course, I wanted to have a platform in order to share the message of the Army. I mean, that's always the purpose of, of having a social media presence uh, in your official position. But unique to me back in 2012 is that because of the added perhaps media attention that I got for my promotion as being the first openly gay general or flag officer in the military is that I wanted a place where people could find me um, if that's what they wanted to do. A place where they could see my message and not necessarily be in my direct chain of command. And so I used that Facebook platform uh, certainly to talk about the things I was doing in my role as Director of Human Capital and to talk about the policy changes. But I also used it as a platform where I could talk about some diversity, equity, and inclusion issues and to talk about what it meant to have pride and service as a member of the LGBT community. And I used it for a lot of other ways where soldiers could go and know that they had a senior leader who was saying some things that maybe they needed to hear and there weren't other voices at that time in 2012 that were necessarily jumping on to the inclusion train. And just the uh, idea of how my promotion came to be. I knew that I had a unique platform in the military to do that, and I chose to step in and, and to do that. When you are doing the one-on-one -on -one team building with your own personal team. You know, the, the thing, and, and this scares people about social media, is that you lose control of it. I mean, you can't control the environment that is social media. And I'm known on Twitter for my love of peeps, but it was accidental. I didn't do anything that um, necessarily that like made me the peeps champion of, of the Twitter world. It was just Easter and spring, and I think we were in COVID, and there's not much else going on. And I did a couple of posts that had to do with peeps and posted a couple of pictures and then it um, started this Twitter conversation and the idea of peeps and love for peeps kind of got stuck with me and so what I did is I just went with it and I used that as a, another opportunity to be human, be present and to have some fun with a topic that wasn't necessarily as serious as many of the other things that we try and get a message out on social media and that has stuck with me and I have been assigned peeps as uh, kind of what what I'm known for on on mill Twitter and but again it, you you think about your influence on social media and our ability to control the narrative we don't always get the opportunity in social media somebody will hijack our story or they will hijack those messages that we are trying to get out and so you know peeps in a way was a exercise for me in when something gets attached to you how do you respond to it? Now this was in good fun, but it do, does provide broader food for thought about when somebody hijacks your narrative or assigns a narrative to you, how will you respond? Because if you're gonna operate in the social media state, it's going to happen at some point.